Good morning, professors. Dr. Raivati P. She is a professor and head of CSC department in Rajalakshmi Engineering College, Chennai. She has 22 years of experience in teaching, and she is an university rank holder in Master of Master of Engineering. She has received Best Paper Award during 2019 and has published more than 20 papers in national and international journals. She has even published five books based on data structures and has delivered more than eight lectures. Her area of interest are data structures, compiler design, Python programming, C programming, operating system, database management systems, resource management techniques, and web mining. I, will, I welcome you to the CTP, ma'am. The session is all yours, ma'am. Thank you. Let me share the screen. Yeah, okay, ma'am. Whether my screen is visible, ma? Yes, ma'am, it is visible, ma'am. Okay. Good morning to one and all. Uh, today's topic is about uh, linked list. So we know what is list. Actually, list is a collection of uh, uh, details, information you store it. Uh, uh, a list can be implemented either in a linked list uh, fashion or in an array implementation. So we do have some disadvantages and advantages in array implementations. Uh, in array implementations where you have a sequence of uh, memory locations, you have a contiguous sequence of memory locations where the data are stored. So uh, when we refer the data, uh, we'll find the data in the and next uh, sequence, next uh, our next uh, memory locations. If it's going to be a, a integer data type, then you can find it in every two bytes. You'll have the next uh, uh, information or the data in, which is stored in a particular list. So the next way is uh, linked list implementations. Here, uh, the data need not to be stored in a, a sequence or need not to be stored in a, a contiguous memory locations. Okay. So linked list, uh, to start with linked list, uh, a linked list where uh, each uh, information will be consisting of, a, uh, in each node, we'll, we'll say a sequence of nodes you'll have. Uh, the nodes will be consisting of two informations. One is about the uh, information which we are, are trying to store in the list, that is the data. The other one is the uh, address, which points to the address of the next uh, data which is in the list so with the help of this pointer we can able to point to the uh, locations where the next data is available so it does need not to be in a contiguous uh, memory can be at any different locations so you can have the a link of a particular element or the first element to the another element through the uh, pointer next pointer which is available in each node so linked list is nothing but it is a series of nodes where each node contains a data element and a next pointer. Data element is the actual data which we are trying to store. And the pointer is pointing to the next data or the next locations where the, you can find the next data in the list. The last node in the list will be stored with a null saying like it is the end of the list so with the help of this uh, next point it is very easy for us to insert an element at any particular positions normally in case of an array element you will have it in a sequence it starts from a, a index of 0 1 2 and it is in a sequence right so when we want to insert an element in the middle 
in the middle say for example if i have a uh, hundred elements and i want to insert an element in the 50th location then we need to swap the rest of the 50 uh, elements and we need to find a room for this 50th element then we need to do the insertion in case of hurry so where you need to have a, a more uh, memory swappings or the relocating it uh, so that is one of the disadvantage in an array wherein it is an advantage in linked you can able to insert an element at any particular positions without disturbing the uh, other data elements and similarly this deletion process if i want to do a deleting an element in a, a list which is based on array implementation if we want to use a memory space effectively then after deleting an element a particular node the other elements we need to move uh, to give uh, or to to collect all the garbages at the end of the a list to have a, a memory utilization so uh, that uh, requires a more data moment but uh, when we do it in a linked list it is very easy just we need to rearrange the pointers wherein the deletion can be easily performed so when we do the linked list we have different types of implementing one is a singly linked list doubly linked list the other one is a circular linked list so this is the uh, diagrammatical or pictorial representation of the singly linked list. So here, this is what we call it as a, this is what we call it as a node. So this node is actually consisting of the data. Here the data stored is nothing but the 10. So this is nothing but the address of the next element. So the next element, that is if I have uh, the elements are uh, 10, 20, 30, and 40 are the elements in the list, and it has been stored in a linked list. So the first element will be 10, wherein the second element, if we want to insert, which is 20, we find the memory location is only at 700, then this pointer will, uh, will store the address of this, 20 so your 700 will be stored at this location and 20 will be the data element value in the next node and similarly this uh, for the second node the third um, uh, element 30 will be uh, in the position 1000 then the address of this 20 will have this 1000 so this is nothing but the pointer variable which shows the address of the next uh, item in the list so this is how the data are stored. This is a diff, uh, pictorial uh, way of representing a linked list where uh, each node will be consisting of two fields. One is the actual element or the data which you have stored. The other one is the address. This is the address uh, which, uh, which is nothing but the address of the next uh, data. So when we say it is at the end, then it will be represented as null. Here, when we represent like this, this represents, here you are storing the null value, means that this is the last element in the list. And uh, this is a linked list with a header. So we call this as a dummy header, a node, which we are going to use it as a dummy, actually means that it doesn't have the data. Then what, what is the use of this header is the header will be having the address of the first element. So when you want to easily fetch your first element, you can make use of a dummy header and that will be pointing to the first element in the list. So a linked list you can create with or without a dummy header. So this header uh, usage or the a way of applying your uh, a particular uh, memory which stores the address of the first element in the linked list we call it as a, a header which is a dummy header actually through which you can easily locate your first node in the list and this is a declaration so hope you when you want to develop uh, or develop a program for creating a linked list or inserting a linked list where you need to do the insertion deletion or any any operations in a linked list and uh, the uh, the this is particularly uh, use the structure 
data type. So the structure, we are naming it as a node. So this structure is consisting of uh, two uh, uh, fields. One is an, so the, uh, actually we are creating the link list for storing the integer uh, element. So here the data which you want to insert is of integer type. So we are using the first field for declaring your data element. And the second field in the structure is uh, we are giving it as a position. Position is nothing but which is a self-referential structure. That is, it is a pointer variable which is pointing to a node. That node is nothing but a structure. Uh, uh, it, that node is of the type structure. So uh, you can even write this. Even you can write this as It means the same because here we are giving a type declaration. We are uh, giving a type declaration for the struct node um, as position and struct node as list. So we are using a two pointer variables. We are renaming the structure type as list and position. So this is nothing but the next. It is a self-referential structure. So we are creating a node using as a structure uh, a data type because it is a one where you have different data types to be named with a single name wherein the first field is of integer type the second field is of a pointer pointing to a, a node which is also a another structure uh, structure data type so we are we are we are declaring it as a structure with a no uh, structure name as node and these are the different functions that you can perform in a list. So we'll go with each and every uh, functions in detail. So the first uh, operation in a linked list is nothing but inserting an element in a linked list. So let us have, we, have, we are having a, a linked list which was already created, which is having the uh, elements 10, 19, 13, 40. So what we are trying to do is we want to insert the element 25. So that element should be in between here 20 and 30. So this is what is the mm, requirement. So what uh, how we are going, trying to do is this 10 20 30 40 is the already available link list. so the pictorial representation here is 10 so the 10 is the data and the address of the next element 20 is available at 700 so this is stored as 700 similarly 30 is at location 1000 so the address uh, field uh, in this particular node, uh, 20 will store this address as 1000 because 1000 is the address where the next element 30 will be located. So this is the available list. What we are trying to do is we want to insert a new node called 25. So we need to create a location. We need to create a memory space for storing this 25. So once we created, once we created a memory, then what we are trying to do is we need to uh, add the data and we also need to link the node in between your 20 and 30. So the, the first step is we have to create the memory space. So we need to create a memory space. Then what we are trying to do is we want to store the uh, data, the data value 25 in that uh, node. Then we need to link the node so this is how we are going to do the process so that this uh, 25 will be inserted in between 20 and 30. so let us take the uh, node after which it wants to store it as p so uh, let us uh, the memory space once you've created we can name this uh, node as nn i'm short i'm giving it as a short like nn represents your new node so when I want to store, this, since a new node is a structure, uh, so you will need to uh, store two uh, values. It, it, uh, each node will be consisting of two fields. So we need to store 
the data as well as the pointer so that it will be linked in between so the first step is when i want to store a data in a structure then i can use new node of data or element so what is the name i've given for the field that is nothing but the element which i want to store so let us take the element which you want to store that is your 25 is going to be in x so first we are assigning the value x in the element part so this is your element part and this is your next and this is uh, this field is nothing but your next so what we are trying to do we have assigned x to the new node of elements so here you have given 25 next we need to link the node we cannot make your a node after which you want to insert once you find like this node i have located if the given element is 20 then i need to find the address of this 20 so that is going to be my first step even the first step will be my finding your x or finding your what to say p that is a, a, a node after which you want to insert so first we need to find the p and then you need to, if the p is already given in the problem then you can directly go for inserting the element so when i want to insert first thing is i have to establish the link so how can i refer how can i get this address this address is there in the p of next so let us take this node as p so this thousand i can get it from p of next so what i have to store this thousand here so how i can give new node of next is going to be my p of next so why we are saying like p of next p of p is going to be this node so the p of next is nothing but thousand so this is the address of my next to 20 is 30 so the address of 30 is stored in 20 uh, node next field so uh, that is my p of next so what we are trying to do we have to first create a link of this so what is this this is referred as new node of next so this new node of next we are going to store this thousand so where can i get my thousand this is nothing but p of next okay then what we are trying to do we are trying to link so we are trying to establish this link so what is this this is nothing but p of and next now we are going to store this new node actually what is this new node new node will be in some uh, say in some um, location 600 now here you will get 600 instead of so this is how actually the insertion is happening so the logic is we need to know after which you want to insert let us take that node as my p okay then the element which i want to insert is my say x but which is nothing but 25 so i need to find the room that is i need to find the memory space for this uh, uh for uh, for uh, for where i can store this x value so that we can create and that now we are calling it as nn so now we need to store two things in that memory location the first field is your data the next field is the next so their data you can store as new node of element is equal to x and then we have to first establish the link so now what happens new node of next is equal to p of next so now what will happen here here you will get your thousand okay now you are making your p of next as new node assume new node is at 600 now p of next will consist of 600 so now we can able to find after my 20 i can find the next address which is at 600 so i can have the uh, next element as 25 in 25 the next address is thousands where i can find the 30 so now the element has inserted the medal so this is the code now uh, we can find the code for inserting an element in the list so we can find uh, we have created a memory space so that is new node that is what i in the earlier um, 
uh, we in the earlier slide I mentioned it as NN. So the new node we are creating a memory space. So we in a C we used to have the uh, a function called malloc. So it is in the uh, alloc dot h uh, header file. You can find the malloc function in the functions. So using this, you can able to create the memory space. So this is the memory space. This is the um, function will include the size. So how much bytes you want to create a memory space. So that we are using a size of. So the size of will return the number of bytes uh, for a, a structure node. So based on that, it will return the number of bytes. So that much bytes, it will be allocated by ML of function. So when the memory space is available, it will be returning the address. That is a address of the memory location. If not, it will return it as a null. So now we are checking whether the memory space is available or not by checking whether new node is not equal to null. So if the memory space is available, then these are the things we are trying to do. We have assigned the value x. Then we make that new node of next as p of next. The third point is p of next is pointed by uh, po pointing to new node. Hope till this is uh, clear. Shall I shall I go in the same way? Hello. Yes, ma'am. You can. Yeah. Thank you. So this is the one of the operation in a linked list. So what we are trying to do is in the uh, linked list, we are trying to insert an element in the middle. So this is the structure. So similarly, if I want to insert at the uh, beginning, so we know at the beginning, I can find the first element. I can find the first uh, element using header of next. So L of next. So what we are trying to do, suppose if I want to insert this 25 in the beginning. So what this is, uh, as I told, you need to create a memory space new node and the data element in new node is going to be your X. Then the point is coming how to link. So where can I find the first node address? It is in L of next. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to assign new node of next as L of next so uh, what happens in l of next you have 5550 uh, so now it will be stored at this point so now you will have your 550 here means this is created then we need to form we need to create this link so assume this new node is at uh, location 250. So we need to make your L of next as 250. So what we are trying to do is we are going to make L of next equal to new node. Means the new node is the memory space. So once you have the memory space, it will return the address as 250. So what happens? L of next is equal to 250. So now uh, here the 250 will be stored. So now header of next. So in the first element 25 you can find. After 25 the next address will be at 550. So you can fetch the next element as 10. So this is how uh, the process for your insertion at the beginning. Similarly when we are trying to do insertion at the end. I know I, I'll tell you how to traverse a list. So assume that you have uh, traversed the whole list and uh, now you're trying to insert a element at the last. So you can create a space. Now we call it as a new node. So let the address of this is going to be assume some 900. So you have created a new node. Uh, let the value new node of next is going to be 90 so you have stored for from the first node like your first node you can get it from header so you have to traverse from each node you can reach the end by concluding where the next is going to be 
now so you are going to identify a node let us give the name as p so where p of x is equal to null there you are going to stop so you can able to find the last node so what is our next step is we have to make the new node of next is going to be null so now this is going to be null and make your p of next pointing to new node means now you will have p of next the value as 900 so means that after the last node the next node is going to be a 90 so this is the overall picture of how to insert an element in the middle in the beginning as well as at the end so the next operation is to check whether the list is empty so as we told you have the uh, dummy header called l so if that header next is storing an address in that address you can able to find the first element so if that l of next is going to be null so we can able to conclude that the list is empty so the list is empty you can check where the l of next is equal to null so this is a function so is empty is a function which will return to a one if it is true that is if the list is empty it will return the value as one otherwise it will return the value of zero so in that case you can say if l of next equal to null then return one even you can also have else Return on zero. So if I'm going to write a function like this, I can say this is empty as a function which will return one if the list is empty, otherwise it will return zero. So how will I check whether the list is empty? Where the header here the header is represented as L. So the header of next, this is my L. So this is my data and this is my next. So when we find this node next is none what is this node this is no, this node is named as l so when the l of next is equal to null we can say the list is empty if it is empty we are going to return one otherwise we are returning zero so this is your uh, function called is empty the next function is to check whether the current position in a list is the last node so if i say if i say this is uh, this is this node uh, is what we are referring with the name called p okay to check whether this p is the last node in the list so how will i conclude if that p next that is the address field of this p is null then i can say this p is the last node otherwise it may have some address in this case if you take it may have the address of uh, this uh, 20 uh, suppose 20 is at the address uh, 400 then uh, this p of next will have the value 400 so if it has some value then it means it is not the last node so when you take here so this 20 next will have the address of the next uh, node so the next node uh, is at the, at the address 600 so in this uh, node that is uh, in this 20 20 i can say this is going to be p of next or some p1 so p1 next is 600 it is not null so this is not a last node so i can find a node position is the last position in the list by checking the next field if that next field is having some address, then I can't say it is the last node. If it is going to be the last node, then the next field will be null. So this is the null. So we'll check at any position 
the next value. If it is equal to null, then it is the last node. If it is not equal to null, means that if it has some address, then it is not equal to null, then it is not in the last position. So is last is a function which will return one if that position is at the last in the list. Next is we are trying to find the find an element in the list. So so far uh, the operations which we are uh, we completed is you have insert uh, and insert you may insert at the beginning. You may insert at the middle or last. Similarly, is it possible to find whether the list is empty? We can able to find whether a particular position is the last position in the list. So these are the functions we have seen. And now we are trying to uh, explain about the find operation. So what is this find? Finding is nothing but searching an element in a list. So if I want to find an element in the list. So what we're trying, it's like a linear search we are going to do it. Means that we we'll start with the first element in the list. Check whether that is the element which you are trying to find. If not, we have to move to the next node and check whether that is the node which you want to find. So likewise, it is like a linear. It is uh, like linearly, we start from the first node, then you will check with the next node. Likewise, we'll keep on doing it till you reach the end of the list. So this is the find. So and uh, uh, like find, you have few more uh, functions like find previous, find next so these are the uh, three functions one is find find is finding a particular element find previous means we will be finding the previous node of the uh, element x find next means we will be finding the success node of the node x so this find previous is used to find your It is used to find the previous one. Whereas the next is used to find the success. We can say it as a predecessor. The next is something that yeah, successor. So in the find element, what we are trying to do is. We are trying to find the element, means particular x. So suppose if I want to find the element x in a list, so x is something but 10. Suppose, as, let us take the same example, you have 10, 20, 25 is the list where you want to find the uh, position of the node uh, where the value is 10. So my x is 10. What we are trying to do, we have to start from the first node. So how can I locate my first node? My first node is nothing but L of next. So L is the dummy header. So uh, L is the dummy header and the next node, L of next is going to be P. So we are going to start with the first element. We are going to try whether this P is the element. P of uh, an element is the uh, value of x. 
if it is equal to 10 then we are going to return this p if it is not equal to 10 we'll be moving to the next element so let us take the example as finding the 10 value so what is trying to do is we are going to start with the first node so how can i locate my first node first node in the header is going to be my l of next so this is going to be my first node i'm going to try to check whether the element of this p is equal to x so if so i'm going to return this p if not i have to move so when i do i have i do have one more exception you may get a null where the null of element will be checking so to avoid this you have to conditional checking in the while loop one is you have to ensure that it is not equal to null so a node which you want to uh, uh, want to check should not be a null so that is the another checking we have so we start with the we'll start with the first node so first node i can get it from l of next so p equal to l of next then what we are trying to do we are going to check the p of element is equal to x or not if not we need to move so in the case of an array implementation of a list what we will try to do we'll start with the index zero so whatever the element you want to check we'll be checking with a of zero if it is at the a zeroth location we are going to return it otherwise we will be implement the index value from 0 to 1 then we'll be checking with a of 1 if the element to be found is not in a of 1 once again we'll be incrementing the index by 1 checking with a of 2 so likewise in an array implementation if we use to find an element in the list in a linear search so what we'll try we'll start with the zero zero index if it is not there in the zeroth index then we'll increment the index we'll search with the first index if it is not in the first position you'll be incrementing the index by one so you'll be searching with the second uh, second uh, position that is third position which is nothing but the second index then likewise the index will be keep on incrementing till the uh, length of the list till the num number of elements you have stored in the list will be searching it so likewise when you want to increment the index by i is equal to i plus one in the case of an array wherein we can find because because in an array we know after one after the zeroth index the next element will be in the first index after the first index it will be in the second index. so we know zero one two is going to be the index value in an iteration so here we can find the next element using the uh, next field in the node, right? So we'll be moving it by p of next, p equal to p of next. What we did in the, uh, what we do in the array is i is equal to i plus one, wherein in the linked list will will traverse through the uh, through the expression called p equal to p of next. So p of next will have the address of the next element that we are going to store with p and each and every time we will traverse in the same way so we we are ensuring that if it is uh, uh, the node which is having the data means that it is a memory location where you are going to have this data if it is not if it is at the last it will have the null value so we have one more condition checking called p is not equal to null so what we are trying to do is we'll start with the We'll start with the first element then we'll check if that element that is first uh, start with the p uh, l of next is equal to p so we are going to start with the first node now we are going to check p, this is the element field so p of element is equal to x if it is not we have to move if it is equal now we are going to return this p so if it is not equal to x then we are going to um, move to the next node so we will check one once again with the uh, exception like p is not equal to now if p is not equal to that so when l of next equal p equal to l of next so if you have something then only you check whether the element is equal to the element to be found if you don't have anything then it will be null so you have to come out so p not equal to null and p of that element element is the element field if it is not equal to 
x that is x is 10 assume that if it is 10 you if both the condition is satisfied that means you haven't reached the element so in that case you will be traversing the list by p equal to p of x otherwise you might would have either reached the list and that is null means that the element is not at all found or otherwise you would have find the element so in such a case you have to return the p clear so you start the first node then check whether p is not equal to null at the same time p of element is not equal to x that is not equal to the element which you want to find in this case x is nothing but 10 so if it is not equal to 10 we will be moving in this case it is equal to 10 so it will come out of the while loop and it will come out of the while loop and it is going to return p so p is what the address that is l of next assume that if it is going to be 200 then it will return the 200 means the address where the element 10 has found okay assume if i want to find uh, the x to be let us take the x is equal to 20 so in this case what happens first time during the iteration p equal to l of next so initially the first p is going to be here so this you will check whether it is not equal to null yes it is not equal to null and the element of p so element of p is 10 but what is our x x is 20 if they are not equal yes they are not equal so you will get into this inside the true block of y where p equal to p of next so in this p of next assume the address of this is 200 assume the address of this is 400 address of this number no this 650 so what happens here in the field of uh, in the next field of this node you may have 400 the next field of this node may have 650 and the next field of this node is consisting of none so what we are trying to check first iteration first step they are not equal so it will get into the true block of this while loop where p equal to p of next so what is p of next p of next is 400 so now this is going to be your p for the second iteration so for the second iteration it will check whether our p is not equal to null yes p is not equal to null and it will also check whether the p of element is not equal to x here the x is 20 so p of element is 20 so this uh, condition fails so it will come out of the while loop and return p so what it will return what is your p now p is written here is as 400 so it will return the address where this value 20 results so this is how the find operation performs so when you want to do the find the next so the same way if i find an element so the find if i want to find next of this 10 so i uh, means that this node so i can just return p of i can just return p p of next so when this is my node i find this 10 so the next node i can get it from p of next so this is going to be uh, 200 Assume the address of this is 200. The address of this is 250. So here you may have 50. So P of next, if I want to find the next address of this uh, 10, so I can find it use P of next, which is nothing but 200. So I have to return only 200. But in the case of 25, the address of that is going to be p of next should be null so where p is not equal to null it may also have one more uh, looping where this p will come to null so to avoid that you have to make this as p of next 
so only these two changes you can able to do why we are doing this because when p not equal to means till this node it will check after that that p will become after that the p will become at this point p equal to p of x so this will become your p so when you want to check a p not equal to null okay and returning p of x is going to be an issue because null load or null so you may get some exceptions so to avoid this here instead of checking as p of p not equal to null in find in find and next you can simply do only one more change over here as p of next and in the p of uh, instead of returning p you need to return p of next so this is everyone knows instead of returning p if i use p of next i can able to find the next element this is the one you need to check to avoid the exceptions where uh, instead of because if p not equal to null till this position it will go till this position it will go and for that null of next next it will return so in to avoid that you can check p of next not equal to null hope uh, it might be clear so this is a case for your find next as i told you you will have changes only at this portion and this portion the rest and all is the same as your find so this uh, this looping is nothing but your traversing so whenever you need to traverse the uh, list we will be checking either till this node till this node is means like p of next is equal to null so till that node you'll be checking or otherwise you'll be checking p or p where p is the null so till that it becomes null so uh, you will be just moving p equal to p of next so this is what the traversing happening so till the last node so how can i find whether a node is a last node where the next of that node is going to be null so till that last node means while p of next not equal to null so till that we will be traversing p equal to p of next so a traversal operation involves only when i say traversing write a routine for traversing you can start with the start node like l of next is equal p equal to l of next will be start with the first node then you can check uh, whether it is the last node if it is not the last node we have to move the node so to find whether the it is the last node you can check whether the p of next is equal to null if it is not equal to null we can move p equal to p of next so this is how the traversing the node in the list happens so in the next it comes to find previous so find previous is a routine which uh, which will return the previous node of the uh, element which you want to find assume if i want to find the previous of the data 20 then i have to return the node which is uh, which is a previous node which stores the previous value of 20 so pre previous now before the value predecessor of 20 so find previous routine is nothing but finding the predecessor of a node so if my node is the element which is having the value as 10 or 20 then i want to find the predecessor assume in a list you will have 10 20 30 then the predecessor of 20 is going to be 10 so i want to return the node of 10 using the routine so what we are trying to do so we are going to start so when what what will be the predecessor of the first node the predecessor of the first node is going to be your header so we'll make from the header we'll find the next next like we'll be checking the ahead we'll be checking the uh, before itself we'll have the node and we'll be checking whether the next node will have the element which you want to check if so the previous node you can uh, you can be there and you, from there you can return it so this is what so you start with the header so we'll start with the header a previous uh, to this node you will be there and keep on checking with the next element so we'll check whether the p of next is not equal to null and p of next of element not equal to x if so you will traverse the list traverse in the sense make 
the uh, moving to the next node you can fetch the next node through the next field of that every node right so p equal to p of next so every node the next field will have the address of the next node so by moving that p, p equal to p of next you can able to traverse so you will check so when i want to find the find the previous of a node 25 that is our consistent representation Suppose you want to find the previous of this 25. So what we are trying to do, we start your P from the header itself. So let your P is going to be one node before that. So let it be start with the header. So assume if you want to find an element, we start with the first node. If you want to find the previous node, then we start from the header and check your first node. And be in one, check your second node. Be in two and check your third node. Likewise, you'll be before a node and check for the next. So what we are trying to do, we are going to make your P as your L, then check whether this P of next element. So P of next, so P of next is what? It may have 200, so you will be fetching the address. So P of next will get 200. In 200, what is the element value? The element value is 10. So P of next of element. So when you start with the first iteration, when you go with the first iteration, first uh, iteration what you will get you will get your p of next so p of next is going to be 200 it is not equal to null yes it is not equal to null and and p of next of element so p of next is 200 that element is nothing but 10. So 10 is not equal to x. What we are trying to find is 25. It is not equal to 25. Yes, it is true. So you will go p equal to p of next. So what is that? p of next is 200. So now this will become p. So it will go up with the second iteration. So in the second iteration, it will check P of next. So 400 not equal to null. Yes, it's true. And 400 400 element, which is nothing but 20. So 20 not equal to 25. Yes, both are true. So it will go for the third uh, iteration. Now what happens to P? P equal to P of next. So now P will become 300. So it will check whether 300 not equal to null. Yes, 300 not equal to null. And that element, that element is 25. It is not equal to 25. So it this false so now the loop ends so it will come out and return the value of p so what it will return it will return the value of p as 300 so this is the address of 25 it's clear the next you will be checking so you will have in the ahead of that so now we are going to return this next. So you are going to return the previous. Sorry, you are going to return the previous. So now what is the previous of uh, P? P is at the beginning, right? So now you will be returning 400. First loop, P is at L. Second iteration, P is at P is at, at the location. 
200 where you will be checking with 400 and when we are checking with 300 your p is at 400 isn't it first situation p is at this position so you'll be checking with the next in the second iteration p is at location and you'll be checking with 300 third time p is at this position and you are checking with the next so you are checking with 300 so what you are going to return we are going to return p so in the third iteration p is at 400 so you will be returning 400 That is the node, previous node of 25. So you will be returning the 400, which is the previous node of 25. Is it clear? Each time when you are checking with P, when P 200, your P is at L. So when you are checking with 400, your P is at 200. When you are checking with uh, 300, your P will be at 400. So at this point, if the condition fails, it will return the P. So you are going to return 400. So these are the uh, operations which we use to find it in the find. So finding an element in the list, finding the previous node in the list, finding the next node in the list, the next node of the X. That is finding the successor, finding an element, finding the predecessor, finding the successor. So this is a little bit tedious in your single link list, wherein this is going to be very easier in the case of W link list. Finding a predecessor node and successor node is going to be easier in the W link list. The next operation is deleting an element from the list. So if I want to delete an element, say if I want to delete 25 from this list, so what will be going, what is going to be my steps is, the first thing is I need to find the element which I want to delete. Okay, find X. So if then, what I need to do once find X actually this is the node which I want to delete. So if I want to delete this, I want to make the previous node to point to the next node. Then only this node is detached from the list. Then I can uh, make a use of a free uh, function to clear the memory space so that this space can be utilized further. So this is how the deleting operation will happen. So in, uh, instead of uh, normally we used to say to find an element, actually what I want to make is previous node link to point to the next node. So instead of having this uh, find, even I can have, I can have, find previous. Are you clear why I'm using find previous? Find is this location I can find. But what I want, if I want to delete this, I want the previous node, next pointer to point to the successor node address. So I can't go with only find, I have to go with the find previous. So what is my next step? Once I find the previous node, I assume if it is P, then I have to make the then I have to make the P of next. I need to do changes to the P of next. So what is going to be a P of next? P of next is this node value. So this uh, X node, I can able to find simply with previous node next. So previous node next is going to be my temp and temp of next is going to be the next successor node of where the address of this is going to be linked with the previous next. So here you can even I can write like this. P of next of next. Even I can write like this or otherwise I can write temp equal to P of next and 
I can have P of next equal to temp of next. So both the way I can do. Finding the previous node, let it be your P. So let is going to be a P. So once you find the previous node P, then make that node next pointer to change. So I can change P of next as P of next is this. That next is going to be the address of this. So assume if you have the address, let us have the address so that you people can be able to make it clear. So this is actually present. So what we are trying to do is we need to do changes over here. What it should be, it should change to 300. So where can I fit this 300 at this position? So what is this? This is P of next of next. So P of next is 200. That next is nothing but 300. So I can make that assigned to P of next. Means after this statement, here p of next will have 300 i either i can write like this or even i can write my p of next as 10 p of next as 10 so 10 p equal to p of next then i can make p of next that is p of next means this address this value is nothing but temp of next so temp of next is what 300 so now 300 i'm going to assign it here like this so two way you can write no issues so likewise you can able to Delete the element. Not only the element we are trying to delete. That is a 25 and trying to delete. I can delete like this. Suppose if I want to delete 20, assume let us take this. This is the list, and I want to try to delete this 20. So what I'm trying to find, I'm going to find the P of next uh, previous use of uh, this 20. So that is going to be my P. So I can find P of next is nothing but P of next of next. So what is there? It is null. So now you can make this as null and remove this. So this is very simple, right? So that particular code will suit for both. If it's going to be a last element also, it will suit because the P of next. So at this point, this is your P. So P of next is this node address. Assume it is 200, not 200. So what will be the 200 next? It's going to be null. So we are going to assign P of next as P of next of next. So that will be assigned as none. All otherwise, make this as temp. So temp is equal to P of next. Then P of next equal to temp of next. You can say, or simply even you can say it as equal to null. Because you know if this is the last node, then I can make. If I'm deleting the last node, the previous node next is going to be none. So simply, instead of writing this also, you simply can write it as wah. If you know the logic, you can easily able to implement. Both seems to be the same. Temp equal to P of next. So what happens? This is my P and this is going to be my temp. So temp equal to P of next. P of next is equal to temp of next. So P of next is now what? Temp of next. Temp of next is null. So this will become null. Either you can say like this, and once you ensure this element to be found is going to be your last node, then simply you can make P of next equal to none. This is also will work the same. Deleting an element from the list. So we are trying to find the previous node and check whether it is not the last node. So locate your temp pass p of next and change do the changes as p of next as temp of next then you are going to use the function called free to free the memory space so that this memory space will be utilized later effectively it's clear uh, any doubt till this assembly link list no ma'am clear ma'am Okay, shall we move on to the next type, which is going to be a 
doubling interest. So as we find in most of the operations, we used to go with this find previous, where that itself is a function. Uh, we need to call this functions. We need to do uh, some uh, time consuming. That is where we will do some process and we'll be returning the uh, previous address of the previous node. So this uh, is a little bit easy uh, using the doubly linked list because that is the advantage of a doubly linked list where finding the predecessor and successor of a node is easier. How? Because in doubly linked list, each node will have three fields. Each node will have three fields. One is your data field, that is your actual element which you are going to store. And in addition, you will have two pointers one pointer will be pointing to the predecessor node and other pointer will be pointing to the uh, next node. So I can say this is the forward link, uh, sorry, forward link will be pointing to the uh, next node and backward link will be pointing to the uh, predecessor node. So you will have two nodes. Totally three fields. This is a data field. And this is going to be a backward. This is going to be a backward link. And this is going to be a Forward link. So forward link is going to give you the successor node and backward link is going to give the predecessor node. So these two are pointers. So backward link as well as a forward link is going to be of a pointer variable in a structure a member and this is pointing to the uh, uh, pointing to the address of a structure type uh, node of a structure type. So this is a data element, backward link and forward link. So every node will be having the three elements. One is the data, the other one is the forward pointer, the other one is the backward pointer. So forward pointer will be pointing or storing the address of the successor node address, whereas the backward pointer stores the address of the predecessor node. So let us take, let us say this is at 100, and this is going to be at 250. And this is the address of the each node. Assume that this is the address of the each node. So this uh, header, header forward link will have the address of the first node. So when you take this node, The backward pointer will store the address of the predecessor node. So assume uh, this is going to be your address of the dummy header. So the backward pointer will store the address of the header in the case of first node. And the forward pointer will have the address of the next node. Similarly, when you take this node, for this node, that this is uh, that is the backward link will have hundred, and the for uh, and the forward link will have three hundred. So likewise, each node will have two pointer fields and one data field. Data field, whatever the data you wish to store, whether it's a string, then it is going to be an array of characters, or if it's going to be an integer, then it can be a an integer data type. So this is the actual data which you want to store, and in addition, you have two or pointer variables, the backward uh, link pointer will have the address of the previous node, that is 200 in this case, and the uh, forward link will have the address of the successor node, in this case 250. So when you want to find the predecessor and successor of a particular node, let us take if it is just a P, then it is very easy to find the uh, predecessor. Predecessor is nothing but your uh, P of 
back burning similarly successor we can easily able to get v of power that's all the predecessor you can get it with backward link just return p of backward link and successor p of forward link for any node p it is easy to find the predecessor and successor because for this p the predecessor is at 200 for this p the successor is at 250 if i'm going to return p of next p of forward link of uh, element then i can able to get this 20. so this is applicable for or the same way the address of the prison successor is stored in each and every node. So this is the uh, pictorial representation of this W link list. As I told, this is the structure declaration where you will have uh, three fields. One is the data field. The other two are the pointer fields pointing to the um, uh, pointing to a, a, a structure uh, type uh, data. So it is also a pointer variable pointing. So if I say in the star P, what it means, P is a, a pointer variable which has the address and that address will have the, uh, in, in that address, you have the value of type integer. Similarly, this forward link is going to be a pointer variable which has the address and in that address, you will have the data of structure type, of uh, structure node type, okay, the same. It's a, like a self-referential structure. So now uh, the same way, whatever the operations we did it in the uh, single link list, we can able to do it in the uh, double link list too. So uh, the, uh, the first very simple one, if I want to find whether the list is uh, empty, I can simply use the same functions. If L of forward link equal to null. So assume if your forward link is going to be null, then the list is empty. So is empty, we'll check if L of X is equal to nil it will return one. Similarly, if I want to check whether the particular uh, node at, is at the last position, so assume if this is my key, so I can simply check for its last, uh, for a node uh, for a node position P, if I want to check whether it is the last uh, node in the list, then I can check if P of forward link is equal to null. If that is equal to null, then I can say this P is at the last position. The list is empty if L of forward link is equal to null. So the two operations are very simple. The next thing is we need to insert an element in the position in between. So we have some, uh, uh, as I told in the normal insertion, right? So the first step is we need to have the space. So we'll be creating a, a memory space using mlloc function which will return a value or that is the address and which is stored in a new node so let us take this is going to be a new node so what is we, we can't we can't make this two links to be first because if we do this then we cannot able to if i do some changes over the list uh, uh, changes over this address then i couldn't be able to find the address of this nodes so first step is, uh, I can even say like this, this is going to be a first step and this is going to be a second step. Then you can go and do the changes for this as a third step and fourth step. So this is how you should uh, do the logic because we cannot make these two assignments as my first and second because if i do i cannot able to get the address of this particular node so the first step is i have to make this new node to link to this uh, field so how can i make a new node this is my forward link and this is my backward link so first step is first we need to create a memory space then we need to do the uh, Assignment for my new node forward link. Then this node. So how can I find this node? This node is nothing but actually P of forward link, right? So if I say this is P, this is this node, I can say even say like this P of forward link. Why? Because 
and the address of this is stored here isn't it assume the address of this is going to be 100 address of this node is going to be 200 address of this node is going to be 300 and the address of address is going to be assume this node be 400 so what happens in this case here this address is going to be 100 and this is going to be 300 and similarly for this node it's going to be 200 and this address is going to be 400 this is going to be 300 and this is going to be now this is the actual assignment so uh, i if i say this is p if i say this is p this node is p i can i can get this node as p of forward link so what is p of forward link which is nothing but 300 so the next node 300 i can say it as p of forward link okay so what is my first step i have to make new node of forward link to point to this 300 that is this address 300 should come over here this should be 300 so what i'm trying to do new node of forward link is 300 how can i get my 300 300 is nothing but p of forward link so it should be p of forward link so what is my next step i have to change this so instead of 200 this assume your new node is at uh, say 700 then this has to get changed to 700 so what is this node this node is p of forward link and what is this address p of forward link backward link i'm repeating this node is p of forward link and this address we need to change this field is backward link so p this node is p of forward link. so p of forward link backward link so the next step will be p of forward link backward link equal to what i'm trying to make i have to store the address of this new node so new node so these are the two steps we did so what is going to be my fourth step fourth step is now we will need to link this node so new node backward link is going to be what means here i need to make it as 200 so how will i do new node backward link is going to be my p so the next step is p of forward link should be new node. so this we are trying to change to Clear? So likewise, we can do the insertion at the middle. So we'll start with P, P or a forward link or a backward link and new node of backward link. These two steps we need to do first. So new node forward link is P of forward link and P of forward link back node, backward link is going to be a new node of this. The next step is going to be new node backward link and p order forward link. So p order forward link is going to be a new node and new node backward link is going to be a p. So this is how you can do at the middle. If it's going to be at the end, you can do only the changes over here. If it's going to be first also, this is going to be the same. Instead of p, we used to say it as l in the case of the beginning. And this is the case for the middle. Suppose if I want to insert the last, then the thing will be you will have a node over here this is a new node assume that this is a new node 
so this is going to be new mode and uh, let us take the address is going to be thousand so assume if i want to insert at the last so very simple if it is going to be the last i can make new node forwarding to be null and i can say the already last i can able to find the last element in the list assume that is going to be the p so i can change p of forward link is going to be new node and new node backward link is going to be p so means here you may get it as 400 and here you may get it as 1000 instead of p so this is what we're trying to do if it's going to be the last one hope uh, insertion is okay now here shall we any doubt somewhere over here yes shall i proceed in the same way So this is going to be the insertion at the middle. So if I want to go with the deletion, deleting an element in the list. So if I want to delete, first I want to find the element and I have to delete it. So because we can even find, we need not to go for find previous. In the case of a single link list, we used to uh, go with the find previous because if I want to delete an element in between, the previous node next pointer should link to the next node so that's why we go with find previous in the singly linked list but in the case of a double linked list it is very easy to get your previous node as well as successor node so it is enough if you find the element if you find the element that is a normal find operation which is going to return your p so what i'm trying to do is i have to detach so i before uh, before erasing the space or making this uh, space as free using a free uh, using a free function you can make the space free means that it will be allocated that space will be left free and it can be placed for the further so before using that we have to do the link change so previous p order uh, previous order forward link so p backward link forward link we are going to change it to p of forward link so this is nothing but P of backward link forward link. So P U backward link forward link is going to be P forward link. And similarly, here you can make P of forward link backward link equal to p of backward link. so what we are trying to do is these are the addresses of each node so after deletion before that this p uh, this 10 forward link will have row 200 and 30 backward link will have 300 so what we are trying to do we have to delete this 200 so what uh, that is the element 20 which is residing at the address 200 so we are we want to free this 200 so what we are trying to do this backward link so what is the value of backward link you will have here for this it's going to be 100 and here it's going to be 300 similarly for here it's going to be 200 for here it's going to be 200 so what we are trying to do this p backward link so this p is this 20 node address 200 this is going to be my p so p backward link backward link is what 100 so we are moving to this node 100 that node forward link so 
at this position we need to do some changes what is that change p forward link so what is your p forward link which is 300 so we are going to make the changes as this is going to be 300 so what we are trying to do p p backward link that is 100 node that forward link so here instead of 200 we are going to make it as p of forward link so p of forward link line of 300 so now this 300 is copied over here the next step during this step what's happening p forward link so p forward link is 300 so in 300 node the backward link is this so that we are going to change it to that we are going to change it to p backward link. so p backward link is what 100 so if you do what's happening after this 10 the next node is at 300 so it will come to over here in this node the predecessor node is 100 so this will go here so this node is now detached so now you can see this so this is the concept for deleting the element x from the list l so to delete an element so we used to check whether it is the last node otherwise so p backward link forward link is p forward link and p forward link backward link is p of backward link so this is what we did so we are going to free this we are going to store that in a tent and free the tent and this is the case for the last element so what we are trying to do last node backward link is the previous node that forward link will become null and you have to pay, remove the node so this is the case for two cases we are going to first find the node x and check whether the x is the at the last node otherwise if it is the last node then make the backward link forward pointer so if this is going to be the node to be deleted the backward link forward pointer so this is going to be a, a backward link forward pointer so that we are going to make it now okay p backward link forward bank we are going to make it null and that p you are going to free so this is the case for the last if the p is going to be the last node if the x is going to be the last node and this is if the x is not at the last and if it is the middle so and three uh, this free is the free is going to be the function which we are going to use to free the memory space which can be utilized later so the advantage of double link list is as we easily find the predecessor and successor that is one of the major advantage of uh, double linked list over simple linked list the other one is deletion operation as we find in the case of a, a singly linked list find previous itself is one function which will find the previous node and then we need to do the uh, changes so that is the case of a single linked list but in the case of a, a double linked list since the finding the predecessor is you can uh, you can be able to find from each and every node you can easily able to find the predecessor so deletion operation is much more easier compared with of single link list uh, and the disadvantage uh, yes it it uh, this uh, double link list to have some uh, disadvantage where we have the more memory space is required because each node is having two pointers each node you have backward pointer and forward point backward link and forward link so this occupies more uh, space as we know uh, for pointer we used to normally say it's of two bytes so for a particular single node the size of a single node itself if a node is going to store an integer data type it may require six bytes of memory for a single node so that is an uh, that is an uh, uh, occupying of more memory space so that is going to be the disadvantage of this doubling increased Yes, uh, so so far we have uh, discussed about the operations in singly linked list and double linked list. In the later part, we'll go with the circular linked list and the applications of linked list. Fine. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. So I think uh, the professors will have got a uh, good knowledge about uh, linked list and double linked list, ma'am. Professors, if you have any doubts, you can uh, raise it up. I'm ready to answer for any questions.
I hope uh, there isn't any doubts, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Uh, traffic is kindly uh, switch on your videos for taking photo session. Revati, ma'am, you too, uh, kindly switch on your video, ma'am, yes, so that we yes. have a session. Participants, kindly switch on your video so that uh, I can have a photo session. Thank you, participants. Thank you, ma'am. So we'll meet up uh, after uh, lunch. Yeah.